welcome to this second tutorial of the bones of the skull. In this video I'm quickly going to talk to you about the bones visible from our posterior aspect or visible from behind. The first bone I'm going to highlight here is our parietal bone and if you remember back to our anterior view tutorial I included the parietal bone in there as well. So it's a very large bone and that it extends all the way from the front to the back well, more kind of from the sides, but you get to see a bit of it from the front as well. And it has two segments. And these two segments are going to be connected by our sagittal suture, which I'm just outlining here. Our sagittal suture runs through the midline of the body, hence the name. As we know, a mid-sagittal plane is along our midline. The next bone we can see highlighted here is our temporal bone with a special focus on the protuberance of bone on the inferior border called the mastoid process. Now the mastoid process being an important attachment point for several of our muscles. So that's the mastoid process here. Now that tends to be larger in men as well, that protuberance of bone there. The bone I've just highlighted in brown here is our occipital bone. And the occipital bone has a few unique structures involved with it as well. And I'll just highlight on the bone that our lambdoid suture, lambdoid suture is what separates it from the parietal bone. So it connects those two bones. And this is the lambdoid suture here. And it's going to connect across both sides of that parietal bone. Now the special structures uh, unique to the occipital bone are the superior neutral line, which we can see on uh, the top portion of the back of the occipital bone here. So superior neutral line runs along here on both sides. And we also have in addition to that an inferior neutral line. Now these lines and uh, also with many structures on most of our bones, usually therefore uh, muscle attachments or interaction points between uh, different bones. These ones, the neutral lines, happen to be for muscle attachments. The external occipital protuberance, in addition to the external occipital crest, are more centrally focused and travel all the way down the foramen magnum, with the external occipital protuberance I've just highlighted there travel all the way down to the foramen magnum, which we will see in our inferior view of the skull, and act as attachment points for the neutral ligament, which is a, a very large and broad ligament. So we've got the occipital crest here as well. Now this small structure that I've just uh, highlighted here is called a sutural bone, or you may also hear it called a wormian bone. Now, wormian bones can be anywhere along the sutural lines, and they are kind of anomalies. They can appear anywhere, and they're usually due to different uh, growth patterns in different individuals. But just for the sake of illustration, I've just put them above the lambdoid suture on this picture. Next, we have our occipitomastoid suture. Now, that's going to be the suture that connects our occipital bone and the temporal bone on both sides. So we can see that they're highlighted in the purple. And the last structure we can see from this posterior view here are the occipital condyles, which we will talk about much more in the inferior view video. So that's our occipital condyles there, which act as our interaction points for our vertebrae. With that, we've covered all of the bones that we can see from the posterior aspect of our skull. I hope that's been helpful, and in the next video, we'll have a look at an inferior view and everything that we can see there. Once again, I'll do up a worksheet for you, and you can practice on that to help memorize, and I'll see you next time.